You guys, welcome to number 7 of the Inter Milan career mode, and to start off this episode, we are in the January transfer window, so that gives us, probably going to do all this episode in the January transfer window, then there's going to be another episode, then there's another one, and then another, and then we're probably done, so there's only like 3 or 4 more episodes left in this series, so it's, it's a really short career mode, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and a lot of games involved in every game now, so looking at the table, we're only like 6 points off the top, so really not a lot, so we could do that in this episode potentially so that'll be something quite good so looking at our messages I've actually requested some money off the board I went for about 30 mil and now my object is of to win the league win the Champions League and to win the like FA Cup in the Serie A I think it's the Tim Cup um, they've only given us 16 and a half million which is not bad because now we're on about 30 million and I think we could potentially do them all to be honest and if we don't it doesn't matter because if we do get sacked then at the end of the day, this career mode's over anyway, so it doesn't really matter if we do get sacked or not at the end of the season. So let's go advance now and see if any of our transfers come back. So here's another one now. It is uh, Chicharito, and we've done a straight swap with Jovetic, and they've actually accepted that. So I don't know. I feel that's a really good deal because the problem is with Jovetic, he's not really an impact player. Uh, Chicharito, however, he's quality, and he's 27 years old. He's getting towards the end of his career. Um, in terms of potential anyway and I feel that would be a really nice signing in the striker position so Everton accepted the 3 million plus Jovetic for Romelu Lukaku who would be an insane signing it's just whether we go for um, Lukaku or Hernandez and I kind of would want Hernandez a little bit more even though Lukaku is a very good player on career mode as well Olivier Giroud straight swap for Jovetic I'm really good with Giroud he's one of the players that I can score goals with I, I use him quite often at the start of a uh, ultimate team like in the first month where pace isn't really a factor he's actually really good so we tried to do a swap deal here with Jovetic United want 44 million that's adding up to about 24 so if we put that to 20 maybe they'll accept it and that would be kind of crazy to bring Wayne Rooney into into my line so into the game now looking at the lineup we should be able to beat Empoli quite nicely they are about bottom of the table they haven't had the best of form recently but we have conceded early on there uh, Zielinski with the goal but Miranda does get a goal there for us to make it 1-1 and there we go in the final moments of the game Perisic with a last minute goal to get us the three points and that just saved so much time it's about 15 minutes to actually play a game on career mode so um, if we can simulate the game here and there then that's really good transfer offering here for Bibiani is from Marseille I'm not too sure if he did play for Marseille in the past he is obviously a Frenchman and um, I think we'll be realistic we'll go for 10.5 million it's only a little bit more and he's been quite useful for us uh, throughout this career mode so far. Um, they are interested in the player, but they want to cash them at 13. I'm going to go for 10. That is it. That is the last one because Alvarez is actually worth 5 million plus the 10 million. That should add up to enough. So as you can see, Manchester United have accepted the Jovetic plus 20 million for Wayne Rooney accepted. The issue is his wages. He's on quite a bit of money, um, but I think we'll be able to swing that over. It's just whether we do want Rooney, like, is he the player that we need in this side? Is he going to be able to get us the wins that we need? So the swap deals with Jovetic have pretty much all been accepted. I'm just going to reject this one for uh, Olivier Giroud, though, because I don't, I like, out of all the players that we need, I don't think Giroud's going to help as much, and um, it was just like a last resort to see what kind of player we could get. Um, so yeah, Chicharito, I kind of do want to just accept that straight away. Um, because it only knocks off 40 grand a week and I would really like to bring in Hernandez he'd be a great impact sub off the bench but we got Draxler here on a ridiculously good deal Jovetic plus 4 million that's adding up to about 17 million ish and then the wage actually goes up he's on 70 grand a week Jovetic and um, Draxler on 60 and he was linked in real life but I might just do this deal for Mertens or maybe just for money like if we put in a 17 million pound bid Maybe they'll accept it. Also, here, Bellarabi for a Jovetic plus 6 million. He's on a lot more money, so I'm going to reject that one as well because for what he is, he's not much better than um, him. Also, we're going to reject Okazaki, 2 million. He's not really that good. He's in really good form in real life, but form in real life and um, how they do on FIFA is quite a bit different. The thing is, I'm going to accept the Ben Arthur deal. It's just out of these two. Um, who we go for. Do we go for Draxler, the centre attacking midfielder slash winger? Not too sure if he really is a winger though. Um, I'd say he's more of a centre attacking midfielder. But Hernandez, 
a great impact, so would get his goals. And um, I really like him. He's one of my favourite players in football. And um, yeah, I'm just going to accept the Manafa deal. Let's get him into the club. Five million plus Brozovic. That's about nine ish million maybe 10 million um but yeah i really like that offer he's a really good player quite handy because he can play on either wing plus um yeah just all the attacking areas that you need so i think we're just going to go for chicharito it's a straight swap and we can just buy draxler if we really want to and i'd say it's a better deal doing it that way we've just got a straight swap it's making it nice and simple put him onto the bench from montoya and um there you go just look at them stats like 88 finishing 87 pace, 87 attacking position. He's the impact sub that everyone needs on their team. So again, we're going to simulate the next game against Sassuolo. It is at home and uh, potentially it is going to be Hernandez and Benoffa's debut, depending on whether they do come off the bench or not. They have got a decent team, Sassuolo, obviously Berardi with the early goal there. They've got Consigli in goal as well. Cannavaro's brother in the defence. Um, I think Sassone, the central midfielder, I want to say on the bench. He's quite good as well, quite a young player and uh, should do well obviously Perisic getting us back into the game there with a goal then we got Bojan getting a goal again um, in the 65th minute and going into the last 10 minutes now and we're clear thank god for that it's always annoying on um, simulating games watching the team just losing the game like in the last few minutes it's really annoying so Marseille have actually accepted the 10.5 million for Bibiani which is a good amount of money for a 29 year old 28 year old he is obviously very good, he's been quite good for us, but we have got Bojan, we've got Ben Arthur now. Um, so moving him on for 10.5 million, that could be quite handy. It means we could go for um, Draxler if we really want to. As you can see here, the 13 million plus Alvarez deal has been accepted. But Julian Draxler, a wonderful player, was linked in real life. And I think if he does accept that contract, then I will bring him in. He's a wonderful player and um, would be a great addition to the side. So we're going to go into the first game now. Well, the first game we're actually going to play against uh, Torino in the Tim Cup. I find it quite funny, the Tim Cup. Just the name called Tim Cup. But obviously, that's their, like, um, O2 and Orange and stuff like that. Their phone company. So Torino, they are an interesting side. I don't think we have got a mobile on this career mode. So we're going to have to make a few changes as um, I have been simulating games. But we have got an opportunity to start by with Ben Arthur and Hernandez, so I'll just sort out the side and see how we go. So into the lineups for today's game, we have gone for a bit of a different team. We've gone for Ben Arthur in behind the striker for his debut. Light on the right, Perisic on his uh, left-hand side. Having a Hernandez as well making the debut. Into the Torino lineup then, we've got Quagliolera up front. And I think it's a five at the back team. Yeah, it is the 5-3-2-1 with Perez at uh, right back. Janssen and Mazimovic in defence, who are very good and very tall. So, um, in the rain especially, first game of the episode, we might even go out of the cup. So, we do need to try quite hard to win this game. And we got an early goal there with Condogbia. That was a wonderful bit of play from uh, Hayton Ben Arthur in the attacking midfielder role. Just one turn it with Hernandez there. Getting the ball back and then just a lovely time ball for Condogbia. I was wondering whether he was offside and... Um, Again, Kondogbia getting another goal for us. He's a really good midfielder on career mode. And um, I'm definitely going to have to look into potentially getting him on the Derby career mode. Obviously, he's going to be quite expensive. So, probably at least another few seasons in. Go on, Hernandez. On his debut, he's got himself a goal. Top of the net. Wonderful finish from the Mexican to make it 2-0 in the game. And, um, yeah, I don't know what Torino doing there. Kondogbia again, creating the chance. A wonderful through ball. And then um, a magical finish from the uh, Mexican. It's just crazy how good he's been since uh, leaving Manchester United like at Real Madrid. I think it was last season, wasn't it? He didn't really do that well. Um, but since joining the Bundesliga at Bayer Leverkusen, he's been absolutely amazing. Here we go, Chicharito. He's on the last man. Can he get the finish? Yes, he can. This has been a wonderful game so far. 30 minutes, 3 goals, 10 goals a minute. Um, yeah, it's just been a really good start again, Ben Arthur. And Hernandez linking up nicely, the right back keeping him on side. And funny thing about this transfer is it wouldn't actually happen in real life because Hernandez has played for two teams. He played for United at the start of the season, played for Leverkusen. He won't be able to register for another team like Ben Arthur, the player in behind him. Um, last season, I think he played for Newcastle and Hull. And obviously, Nice couldn't play him until uh, the start of this season. So, yeah, great start for Hernandez and uh, Ben Arthur. 
And there it is, full time. We've got the uh, win, and we are through to the next round. And I believe it is actually like we're in the last 16 now, so we go through to the quarterfinals, then the semi, then the final. So we really don't need to win that many games. And um, I'll have to see what we got in the next round. So as you can see, we have sold Bibiane there for 10.5 million, giving us an extra. 9 million, we got 72 grand for uh, winning that game as well. So the Ox has actually been accepted, 11 million plus Alvarez. Um, I think out of the two, like between the Ox and uh, Draxler, I think Draxler would be my preferred option. So Sam Dory has actually signed Nagatomo on a pre contract signing, so we can't really do anything with them now, but he's only worth like a mil, so we'll just keep him from now until the end of the season. A bit of cover in the left back position, and as you can see, the 13 million plus Alvarez adding up to about 17, 18 million has been accepted for Julian Draxler, 60 grand a week. I don't know how we can't like not accept this because he's a wonderful player, Draxler. Still got 15 million plus 100 grand a week wages. So we could bring in Corona as well, but I don't think we really need another winger, but we have just sold Bibiani, so maybe we do. I'll have a look at the side. So into the game then against Atlanta, we're just gonna simulate it as um, we do have the game against Juventus in this month in the next round of the Tim Cup. So. Yeah, hopefully we can get a win. We have just scored there with the Cardi in the 27th minute. Good start to the game away from home. Hopefully we get the three points. That'll be quite vital. But unfortunately, we have actually conceded there from Pinola, the uh, Chilean, I think. And um, hopefully we do get injuries as well. That's one thing with simulating games. You tend to get injuries. But unfortunately, we've only managed to get the point in the game. A little bit annoying. Um, but still, you look at the table. We're, we're only like, what? Four points if that. So we're going to put Malo plus the 17.5 uh, million adding up to about 23 um, and obviously he wants to leave the club so I think this deal could get done quite nicely. So whilst I've actually accepted the 15.5 million plus Ambrosio, Wilshire would be a wonderful player. The only problem is with his uh, injury prone trait, will he get injured between now and the end of the season which we don't really want. But it doesn't really matter if it does happen because obviously we've got Guarine and a few other players. Oh, fuck, I've just done that, haven't I? I've just sold Ambrosio, who was a part of the Wilshire deal. And now we need to put another bid in for Wilshire. That's oh, so annoying when that kind of thing happens on career mode. Like, I want to like agree that I don't want to sell that player anymore um, because I want to keep him for that deal. But whatever, I'll just have to put a bid in for him. Um, but yeah, again, another deal's Crystal Palace and... Uh, Newcastle really wanting a striker. So what we could do is put Medell, who's worth about 15 million. Um, they want 24, so that's what? We'll put 10, and then hopefully we'll sign Pjanic. And that would be a really good sign. And obviously Medell has not been that good, really, let's be honest. I've not really needed him throughout this career mode. He's only been like an impact sub towards the end of the games just to seal it up. So another player that wants to leave is Kandreva, who would be another wonderful player to bring in. It's just how we bring him in, that's the only thing. Like, we've put 10 million in for uh, a Cardi, so if we put another 10 in for him, and then put a player into it, maybe adding up to about 15 million, we could do that. And that would be another great signing, it's just who we put into the deal. Obviously we've made quite a few signings, so we haven't got that many options really. We could put Palacio on it, but he is quite a legend. So I think we will put Palacio into the deal, but I'll drop it down to about 8 mil, adding up to about 16 million anyway. So that should be accepted, and I know Palacio is a legend to Inter Milan, um, but do we really need him? We've got Hernandez, we've got Icardi, Ben Arthur can play there if need be, same with Perisic. So now Arsenal have set a £27 million price tag for Wilshire, even though they accepted, what was it, 15 million plus uh, Ambrosio? That's like, what, 17 million if that? So I'm just going to put every penny we have just so we do have an option of a centre mid if we need it. Into the next game now against Carpi, they're one of the easier teams so we're just going to be playing with the second team and hopefully we can win. They've won the last, uh, lost the last two. So um, yeah, we've actually conceded early on there. Mbeka Jaku, the Nigerian striker, I think that's his name anyway, he's missed a penalty as well. So we could have been 2-0 down in the first 15 minutes but there is lights to reply with a goal to get us back into it. Hopefully we can get the goal. Palacio there with the penalty, that's good to see. The legend that is Palacio get a goal and uh, put us into the lead. Last 10 minutes now, we've got nothing good. Thank God for that. It's just horrible, horrible watching simming games because you always lose points in it. So, we've got quite a few options here. Gary Medell for Candreva has been accepted. 
we could do both of these deals actually I think I think anyway um, I'm not too sure on the wage front if we could do both but we've definitely got options we've got Kandreva and Pjanic both really good players 20 million um, for him obviously quite a bit of wage but I'm not too sure what Melo and uh, Medell on so yeah oh why Pjanic has decided to join Manchester City obviously they're a bigger team and a better league but oh, that's really annoying. I really wanted Pjanic um, it's just whether we go for Kandreva or not it's a deal we don't kind of need because Kandreva is more of a cam and Medell's more of a central midfielder but it's really like so cheap for us like we only lose 2 million 60 grand a week wages we still have 20 mil so we could just bring in a really young CDM kind of player just play him in there you know do the job um, so yeah I think we'll do that Kandre was a wonderful place really good for Italy does well for Lazio and it's weakening one side making us better but it's really annoying that um, Pjanic had to go to City because that would have been a really really good signing but still 83 rated Kandreva uh, bringing in another attacking star player so we've got plenty of options now should be able to score plenty of goals from now until the end of the season um, I think we're going to have to drop him and we're going to have to put Malo onto the bench but now we need to potentially consider changing the formation maybe changing the team as um, we've got quite a few attacking players defensively we're quite low we've got Kondogbia, Guarine Medell on the bench, obviously Draxler can play centre mid if he needs to. So I think what we're going to do is actually sign Juzanovic, the uh, centre mid from uh, Werder Bremen, because that would be a really nice backup option just in the midfield. Um, I think, what did they want? I think they wanted about 10 mil, so I'll just accept that. We don't want to mess about now. We've got not many days left in the window. I'm not too sure if I've got anyone else that we could uh, fill in that role. So there we go, both deals have been accepted. That is kind of crazy because both of them are players I could quite like in the team um, I think we do need to do a two year because if we do a one year it will run out at the end of the season um, we can financially do that deal for Xavi Alonso that's good to see but maybe Juzanovic would be a better player he's a bit more um, pacey a little bit more stamina and um, a little bit more going forwards as well like obviously Xavi Alonso well known for his holding role and uh, long passing into the next game now it is against Juventus at the Juventus Stadium one of the toughest games have we played Juventus yet I don't think we have actually we did we did we played Juventus we beat them 1-0 now this side's quite different we've got Candreva we got Hernandez in so looking at their lineup I think they've gone for a three at the back with uh, Rugane, Chiellini and Benucci yeah Cadera holding Perea, Cuadrado, Marquisio Asamoa, Mandzukic and uh, Dybala up front and obviously the legend that is Buffon in goal. Here's our lineup. We've gone for Kandreva on the right, Perisic on the left. I was really tempted to start with Draxler but Hernandez, Mertens, um, Tejas, Morello and uh, Miranda in the defence as well. And um, yeah, potentially Juzanovic coming into the team as well or uh, Xavi Alonso. So we could really do quite well in all the cups and um, potentially at least win the double. Oh, and it's Jabala with the goal. 20th minute there from the Argentinian. Or is it Perea? It might have been Perea. No, it's Jabala for sure, yeah. Um, left foot of his, really good and obviously not quite tight enough. I think it was Santon playing centre-back, which is a little bit annoying when the defence does mix itself up. But we've got plenty of options going forwards and we should be able to get a goal. There we go. Mertens with the goal just before our time. With his left foot as well. It's his weaker foot and... Um, yeah, I was just thinking, like, our front three, at the moment anyway, front four, front, like, ev basically everyone since Guarine and um, Handanovic, everyone's new since the last summer, so that's crazy that the entire team has changed in uh, such a short period of time. But yeah, it was a lovely strike. Chiellini probably should have blocked it, and um, here we got ourselves back into the game just before off time. So it's going to penalties. Oh, this is going to be horrible. I've not done a penalty shoot in such a long time. We don't really have that many good ones. We've got like the first three four after that it's all below 70 um so it's going to be an interesting one that's for sure first penalty for Mandzukic where's he gonna go I reckon he'll go bottom left no oh, we've missed it how have you I hate that when you dive the right way um but it doesn't matter no no Buffon 
I put that to the left so much, it's ridiculous. Again, Hernandez. Always hit the underside of the crossbar. That's good. Maybe we could uh, get ourselves into the lead now with Ben Arthur. No, no we're not. No, <laughs> Buffon's just going to save everything. Oh, this is horrible. This is a terrible penalty shootout. Oh, they've actually scored for once. They're 2-0 up now. We need to score this, essentially. There we go, Akadi banging it away. Come on, Pogba, miss it, son. Oh, they've gone that way again. Like, can you stop going to the left? That would be lovely. Now, Guarin has to score this to keep us in it. Thank God for that, he's scored. Oof. I'm not too sure if Quadrado scores this. They win, maybe. I've dived the right way. Oh, this game. Penalties. Just like, come on. Whoever takes a penalty on FIFA... It's not like you win them. Oh, so annoying. Like, to lose on penalties against Juventus. Like, that's just so annoying. Especially when you dive. Like, I dived the right way, I think, like, three out of the five times. And, um, yeah. They somehow still won. It was in the top corner, but still, like, come on. What's the point in diving that way if it's um, not going to do anything? Into the derby, then, against Milan. Against Milan, obviously. Um, it is going to be... A really nice game to end off the episode and to end off the January transfer window. Here is the AC Milan lineup. They got Balotelli and Bakker up front. Menez, Honda, Abate, Romagnoli, Alex, Antonelli, Hugo Lori in goal, Kuka and De Jong in the holding midfield role. And um, yeah, we've only brought in Jozanovic into the team for this game. Kandrova didn't do too well, like he didn't set up anything too special, but it was his first game, so maybe he'll do a bit better off the bench and um, yeah, hopefully we can get a win in this game. Here we go, Ben Arthur's bringing it inside. Can he get the finish? Kind of. Kind of got the finish. He, he kind of deflected into the back and I was trying to work out what just happened. Absolutely rinsed Antonelli, the left back. Cut inside, finessed it. Probably would have been saved whether it's uh, Ben Arthur's goal or not. I'm not too sure. I think it's going to go down on Robin Pinoli's the uh, young centre-back, I think he's in like 21 years old. No, it's actually gone out of Ben Arthur, so that's interesting. Last 15 minutes now. Can we get a win over the uh, Milan? Here we go, Chicharito against Hugo Lori, And he's put it into the back of the net to seal the three points in the big derby. Really good to see him impact in this game. A wonderful ball from Perisic, just loops it over the defence. Lovely bit of touch. I was going to hit it first time, and I thought... Now let's just take it down and uh, lovely finesse shot into the back of the net to uh, get us the three points. And there it is full time. We've got the win against Milan. I think we did actually lose the like home technically, but it is both home. Um, the home game against them. So it was good to see us get a win. And um, yeah, a good way to end off the month as well. So I think we're just going to end off the episode here because... I feel like we could potentially do a little bit more business, like maybe a swap deal, maybe I've not realised something. Maybe you guys can leave a comment down below on who we could do a swap deal, maybe Handanovic for Neuer, maybe, I don't know, maybe that could be an option for us. Um, I don't know, maybe a Cardi for like an 84, maybe like Higuain or something like that, just to make it a little bit better. Obviously Hernandez doing really well in this episode, I think he got three or four goals. And they're even not quite making uh, the impact, and same with Draxler, but they've only played a couple of games. However, an offer and uh, Hernandez, wonderful signing so far. So, yeah, I think we're going to end off the episode here. Just leave us a little bit to do in the next episode in the transfer window. So, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and see you soon. Bye.